Wow. I have, you know, because I run nights. Mm, I run nights, and I take my dog out. You know, I'll get up about 1, 2, 3 o'clock in the morning. I'll take my dog out behind, you know, sometimes behind the trailer is the only place there is. And I'll take him back there to go to the bathroom. And I've looked over. I couldn't tell you how many times dude's sitting on his ICC bumper taking a crap. And I'm just going... Wow, dude, you couldn't, like, make it inside to go to the bathroom? The bathroom's put, right there. I don't think he could. <laughs> oh, my God. They carry a bucket or a garbage can in your truck. Because <laughs> I don't care who you are as a driver. You have all been in that emergency situation where you have been someplace where you have got to go, mm-hmm. and there ain't no place to go. Uh, everybody's done it. And if you haven't, then, they're, yeah, no. You've got to be lying. <laughs> Oh, man. We have Tru- all been there. Man, trucker chick, I am enjoying you right now, man. So, all right, so let's, uh, let's, let's, uh, let's, uh, let's, uh, fast track to, to your social media, man. Why, why did you, you know, why did you choose TikTok for your, for your platform, for your content? Why not, why not YouTube? Why not, well, uh, Instagram? Okay, well, apparently I am like, um, uh, social media inept. I don't know how to work Instagram. Mm-hmm. I have an Instagram, but I don't post on it. And I don't know how to work it very well. Mm-hmm. Um, TikTok was something that um, my daughter told me about it. I would have never have gotten on Facebook if it wasn't for my daughter. Mm-hmm. Um, and uh, I, my my ex um, was telling me about it, and I got into it last year about, I guess it would have been about the end of February, mm-hmm. not last year, was it last year, yeah, it was last year, wow, I've only been on there a year and a half, so, um, yeah, it was the uh, beginning of last year, I got on there, and I was a little hesitant at first, I watched a lot of stuff, and I was like, eh, you know, I, I have a boring life, I'm very self-conscious about myself, and mm-hmm. I don't like to do videos of myself, because I'm just, I'm, I'm very, very self-conscious about how I look, and how I sound, and, you know, everything about me. And so I was like, eh, and, you know, and then I got to a thousand followers and I was started going live. And I mean, you know, I had, you know, 10, five, six, seven people. And so I went live all the time. And at the beginning I was doing it all day, every day. Mm-hmm. And here's the thing. A lot of people, I do live when I'm driving. Here's the deal though. Now that I've learned all the rules, cause I have been on D de- I have been on my live and been pulled into a scale and been DOT on live before. As long as the camera is in the holder on the dash, it is facing out the windshield, and you are not reading the comments, it is perfectly legal to have that going. It's just like a camera in your truck. Mm -hmm. I do not go live unless my moderator, my best friend Allison, unless she is on the phone with me, and I am, she's reading my comments to me, and I am answering them. On a super rare occasion, I will go live when she's not with me, Mm -hmm. but not, not very often. So, and I do get banned. I get a lot of 10-minute bans for dangerous acts because I'm driving. And I'm like, my phone sits stuck down in the corner of my dash on my windshield. I can't even see the comments if I wanted to. So, um, yeah. I see a lot of people that have the camera facing in, and you can see them reading the comments. God forbid if something were to happen to you and you get in an accident. It would be your fault. It will automatically be your fault. Yep. I actually had that happen to me two weekends ago, two weeks ago yesterday. I was out on Long Island, and I never, I hadn't been on the island in years. I did it as a favor for the one of the guys that owns my company. Mm-hmm. Um, they needed a load picked up Saturday morning. I was out there. It was about 4 o'clock in the morning. I was out on 4, what is that, 495 that goes out on the island out there. Mm-hmm. And I was about halfway out on the island in the right lane, 55 miles an hour, had my cruise set. And I was on live, and I had my friend on the phone. She's reading comments. And next thing I know, I got rear-ended by a car. I was on live when it happened. And it actually got, it actually was caught on my live, um, because where my phone sits catches my mirror on my hood. Mm -hmm. And I went back and looked at my live replay later, and you could see it all unfold behind me. And I was stunned for a minute, and I felt, you know, I got shoved down the road pretty good. I'm like, what the hell? I turned around, looked, and watched the car spin out and shoot off in the trees. And I'm like, whoa, I just got hit. Mm -hmm. I'm like, oh, crap. 
you know, I'm on live and this is happening. I'm like, well, this is great. And I was an 18 year old kid. I don't know what he was doing. He just, probably. Yeah, yeah, I found out later he wasn't. Well, he wasn't drunk. He wasn't on drugs or anything. And he was doing. The, the police said that he was doing over 90 miles an hour when he hit me. He was on probably on his. And phone. his car solo. He walked away because he walked up wow. to my truck and he looked right at me. I was on the phone with my dispatch, mm-hmm. and um, he says, "What happened? I don't even know what happened." <laughs> I you said, ran uh, into you me. You hit That's me. <laughs> I said, "Yeah, hit me." He rolled his car twice. I think what saved him. He was in a Subaru. So I think, really, honestly, that's what saved him. But um, yeah, yeah, the Subaru he, um, got them good, totally got, got them good cars. <laughs> Apparently so. I watched it as it went by on the flat because I didn't go back there and look. The police had me stay up front. I never talked to the kid after that. Right. Um, I they sent him to the hospital just to have him checked out. But he was walking and talking to me when went right after it happened. So and I looked at him and he didn't have a scratch on him. Wow. I mean, nothing. I looked at the car when it went by, and I, I, he hit the corner of my trailer, and it just, the car just wrapped around, and you could see the V in the front end where he hit my trailer. That's the only damage I have, and he's lucky, because I would have killed him if he had touched my truck, because I didn't even have 3,000 miles on my truck when that happened. <laughs> so you said this is, so back to, you know, doing a live feeds per driving, so you mm-hmm. actually got confirmation from... A DOT that says that as long yeah. as you're because see me as long as I never you're not holding it I, I out have the a, window I have an issue I don't I, read the comments I I, I have an issue I, I really do I, I have a really big issue now I did uh you know I did a couple of videos a couple of lives but my camera always pointed outside and of course you know I mm-hmm. never pay attention to uh, never paid attention to the comments, but I mean to be honest, I do have an issue with drivers that actually do, you know, live feeds and the and the camera is pointing at them. You yeah. know what I'm saying? And I, you know, I'll and, tell I'm just, you and I just happened. say to my head, I, I just, oh, I'm sorry. I, <laughs> I, I just no. say, I, I just say I'm, to I'm my just head. laughing. I'm just, I shake my head. Yeah. What do you do? You know, I just sit there. I'm like, wow. Right. Same thing with me. I I just say to my head, like, yo, I I just hope nothing happens while mm-hmm. you're, you know, while while you're on a live have, feed. You know. I have watched drivers on their lives, literally leaning over to their phone, reading the comments, and I'm going, wow. you're driving down the road at 65, 70, 75 miles mm-hmm. an hour. Leaning over like that, looking at your comments. Not a good I can't look. say I'm not. I, I can't say I'm perfect. You know, I have done lives and read my comments, and and you know, and when I first started doing them, my camera was facing in because I didn't know. Mm-hmm. So, but my camera sits literally right in front of my face, whether it's facing out, facing in, it sits right in front of my face. Mm-hmm. So, you know, I um, I'm not looking away from my windshield. But, no, I just, after, especially after a couple weeks ago, it's out the window. She's on the phone with me reading comments. So, TikTok is your is, is your go-to platform for uh, content. How, uh, you, you've been on there for a year and a half. How many, uh, how many followers that you got on there so far? Right now, I have, I was actually just going to pull it up. Um, let's see, I've got... Forty-three thousand seven hundred. Man, and this is all not and, very many. Not very many, but it's enough. <laughs> you know, like I said, your your this the, is the, also the, my third account. <laughs> your your video came across my for you page. That's that's what made me uh made me reach out to you because uh because we're about to talk about oh. the incident uh that just recently happened oh, to you. Yes. And you know I. am I'm I'm beginning to see like I've been in I I've been a YouTuber I've been a YouTuber for over 15 years, uh, you know I I have mm-hmm. like I I had a multitude of of content. My platform really didn't take off until I got into into trucking, and it really took off when I started doing the uh when I started doing the Lockout Men podcast show. So. 
you know, before, mm-hmm. you know, I used to do the vlogging, the camera work, the the music and all like that. Mm-hmm. But, um, you know, later down the line, I was like, look, I'm just getting too damn tired to try to edit, try to edit all these videos for 10 minutes and only getting this oh, yeah. out of it. So, I, you know, I started doing the podcast and it really and my podcast really took off, which is the coolest podcast on the on the tube right now i'm just saying the best conversations starts over here on the lockout man podcast show i'm just saying um so <laughs> with 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 all that said um you uh did a video uh again i i came that's why i came across you you did a video and mm-hmm. uh you was up in my home state of ohio uh, right over there, right over there in Springfield, right over there off of 70. I know that loves yep. very well. Uh, oh, I what, do too, unfortunately. What hap- What what happened to you from start to finish when you when you pulled up in the loves? I want to give a PSA to the drivers out there. Um, please be careful when you get out of your trucks. I was at Loves in Springfield, Ohio today. I uh, stepped out of my truck to go inside to go to the bathroom, get something to drink. And a guy walked up to me and said, hey, there's a guy down here giving money away. He wanted the casino. I'm like, no. I was on the phone, busy. Leave me alone. He looked at me. He says, you don't understand. You're going with me. And he whistled when I didn't comply. Two other guys showed up, ushered me to the back of my trailer, and took my wallet out of my hand and took all the cash I had in it, which was a significant amount. Uh, so, um, I called the cops. They said private property, tough shit. We don't have time for it basically. So please just be careful, be watchful. And, uh, yeah, that's all I got to say. I just want to warn people. It's, uh, getting to be really scary out here. Um, sorry. I was multitasking here. No, I, um, I pulled up. It was about two o'clock in the afternoon. Mm-hmm. Dog barking. I'm going outside. About two o'clock in the afternoon, I stopped over there, take a break, get something to drink and whatnot. And uh, I was on the phone with my best friend, and uh, this guy came up and knocked at my door, and he's like, "Hey, there's a driver over here, one money at the casino." I'm like, hm, "That's nice." He's like, "He's giving money away to people." I'm like, "Well, whatever." I said, I, "Okay, I don't need money." Freeze, you know, right there. Give it to somebody. Hold up. I know where this loves is at. There's not a oh. casino in that area unless you drive ninety. I know. Unless you drive ninety miles, an hour, about an hour and a half, because I know where the closest yep. casino is there, and it's the Hollywood Casino in yep. Columbus. Ain't no casino yep. in Springfield. <laughs> so that was a real yep. flag. I know this too. <laughs> that was a red yeah, flag right me there. Yeah, too, and I'm like, all right. So he said, he's like, all oh, the news. Mm-hmm. He's like, all oh, the news crews over here and everything. And I'm uh-huh. like, I just drove through the parking lot. Um, I didn't see nothing. And I'm, you know, and I'm like talking to my to my friend on the phone. And he's like, oh yeah, you must have had your CB turned on when you pulled in here. They're talking about it all over the radio. And I said, as a matter of fact, my radio's on and ain't nobody talking. And I'm like, dude, I said, I ain't got time. I got to go. Mm-hmm. I'm going inside to get something to drink, to go to the bathroom. I got to get going. I got places to be. Right. And uh, and so I thought he walked away. And, uh, well, he did. He went a couple of trucks down and was telling another driver the same thing. I stepped out of my truck, and this guy popped up out of nowhere. I, I guess he must have came around the front of my truck, and I didn't see him when I was getting out because mm-hmm. my dog started barking. And so um, he's like... He's like, are you sure you don't want any free money? And I'm like, no. You know, I had my wallet in my hand, which sometimes I take it out, sometimes I don't. And normally I don't. And this particular time, I needed my wallet when I went inside. So Mm -hmm. I didn't want to take my stuff out of my wallet because I have a bad habit of misplacing my license, my Mm -hmm. debit card and stuff. So we just leave it in the wallet. And, you know, and I do carry some cash on me sometimes. Not very often anymore, not like I used to, but, mm-hmm. you know, if I, we, especially when the weekend's coming up, in case I need a repair, or tire, or something, I just pay for it and worry about it later. Right. And uh, so he walks up to me, he says, no, you need to come over here and check this out. I'm like, no, dude. I said, i got to go to the bathroom, get the hell up out of my way. Right. He's like, he looked at me, he says, you don't understand, you need to come with me. And I'm like, uh, no, you need to get up out of my way. And 
I left a lot of details out of my video. So, because I caught some hate, I had to turn my comments off on the video because I, I caught I hate was about to I was about it. to ask I was about to ask you about that too mm -hmm. because you you did turn the comments off and I was I was kind of wondering did. I was kind of wondering that myself. But, but here's yeah. the thing, you he this is this is at two o'clock in the evening. No, yeah, two o'clock in the afternoon. I'm literally the second parking spot over from the end closest to the building, right behind the fuel island. I mean, you know, people were going back and forth, but, you know, I'm standing like back, um, about two steps back from where he closed the door. And this guy's standing in front of me, blocking me. The only other opposite way I had out was to the back of my trailer. So he was, he had me blocked in. And I did, I said, no, I'm going inside. And he whistled and two guys came up behind me. And being, I'm only 5'1". I, I'm, a, I'm a short, fat girl. Right. And these are three guys that are six foot tall. Two of them were older. One of them was drunk off his ass. And, I, you, you know, until you're in that position, you don't know what you're going to do. And it was, you know, I you have to think, like, spur of the moment. And I just, they wanted money. That's all they wanted. But and Trucker chick. So I, they, I got I they, got it. I gotta ask, cause you know, of course, when somebody when they when they listen to this podcast, they're gonna ask the same question that I'm about to ask. This is two o'clock in the evening. Where yeah. where it, it, it wasn't nobody. It it, it it wasn't nobody. Or was it the drivers on either side of me? They were, they were not in their trucks. If one well, the one on my left was on my driver's side was sleeping because he came up out of the truck after the fact. And the one on the other side of me, um, I, I guess they were either inside or they were um, somewhere. I don't know where they were. I never saw them, you know. And I had my reefer running. My truck was running. And the truck next to me was running with straight pipes. I could have, somebody said, well, you should you have yelled and screamed. I could have yeah. yelled and screamed while I was blue in the face. And nobody could hear me over the trucks. You know, it's just not, you know. And somebody said, well, you should have been carrying well, I'm not going to confirm or deny what I do or I don't, but even if I was, I'm sure not going to take it with me out of my truck if I do. And, well, they were like, well, Mace, and it's broad daylight. I stop at this truck stop all the time. I've never had an issue there. And I figured broad daylight, I shouldn't really have to worry about it because they're stepping out and going inside. And there were trucks in the fuel island, you know, two trailer lengths across the parking lot from me. So... You know, they kind of pushed me towards the back of my trailer, stashed my wallet out of my hand, and took all my cash out of it, which was only 450 bucks. but that's like, you know, that's my that's my house payment, you know. Yeah, but... Does it hurt me? Yeah. Will I recover it? Yeah. It's going to take me a little bit. i got to pull a couple extra loads that I really didn't want to. But it's the principle of the fact that it happened during broad daylight, and a lot of people don't think about this. I, you know, it's... Being a female out here, yeah, there's a lot of them that are overprotective. They carry this, they carry that. In this particular situation, no matter what I would have done, nothing would have worked. Mace, any of that, because there was three of them. I had one in front and two behind. What do you do? You know, I, I didn't want to get beat up. I didn't want to get hurt. I didn't want to get shot or stabbed or, you know, I didn't know if they had guns or knives or, you know, you don't know. And I caught some hell. I had, I, the reason my comments are off, I got a DM. Somebody said, well, maybe you deserve to get robbed for take, for having all that money on you. And, you know, you should have, uh, you should have been caring or you should have done this. You should have done that. And you deserve it. And, you know, and that's why I turned my comments off. You know, <sighs> nobody deserves to be put in that position. No. You, you, you know, you know what, you, you know what, that's, that is that that is a crazy story, and for somebody to you know, I, I understand that it's a you know it's some issues for you lady drivers out here, and it's crazy like that. But still, you know, I'm I'm you know I'm like everybody else that you know that saw your story, and I'm like two o'clock in the evening at that. It it gotta be something. I had and, somebody comment on um, my best friend who edited the video. And somebody said on there, there's no way this happened. She was on the phone with me and heard the whole thing, but she didn't know where I was and there was mm -hmm. nothing she could do because it happened so fast. Now, they, they robbed another driver. 
they got him over to where they were doing. I don't know exactly what they were doing. I don't know. I, in what I heard him telling the police, mm-hmm. um, that um, they were doing like a three card money thing. They took they. Um, he didn't have any cash on him. They snatched the rings off of his hand. He was an older guy. He was a. He didn't speak very good English. Mm-hmm. Um, and he called the cops because I was like, you know, it's four hundred fifty bucks. It's no big deal. Um, uh, I, I'm, it's money. Money is replaceable. I'm not worried about it. I'm here. I'm alive. I'm safe. No big deal. He came up to me and asked me about it. Cause he saw the guys run off from my truck cause he was looking for him. And, um, so I said, you know, if you had that taken from you, you need to call the police. And he did. And the cops told him and he had it on speaker and they said they, once he explained to them what had happened to him mm-hmm. and I had told her what happened to me at the same time. I told her, I said, look, they snatched my wallet on my hand. They took my money. They had me trapped in in the back of my trailer. I had no place to go. To me, that's robbery. And she told me 